I found possibly one of the best gyms on eBay for Mustangs ever. I'm not even lying. Man, it's just another beautiful day out here. Welcome back to the channel. I wanna show you guys my mom's car because I haven't really shown you guys this too much, but she has a 2014, another 5.0. This is Sterling Gray. She actually had a car just like this that really made me fall in love with 5.0s. Now, of course, we've done a few mods to it to spruce it up because there's a lot of 5.0s out there and I didn't want her just driving around like a standard car. So what we did was we put the Roush side skirts. Of course, she's got the Brembo package with the Brembo wheels. She used to have a different set of wheels but we actually just sold those. So she had Verdes on here, just like my first setup. But we're trying to figure out what she wants on the next setup. Now, what designs do you guys think would look good on a Sterling Gray car? We're thinking something like a silver finish. Want to stay away from black. Want to stay away from something that's always or already been done. I don't know. We're going to try to take our time, really dial in what we want. So that way she gets some nice wheels on her car. Like I said, we got the Roush side skirt. We got the Roush rear skirt. Obviously, Doty sticker. These are available online. Link down in the description. Lady Driven and Blue Lives Matter. She also has an OG Matic Works sticker, but it's super peeled. Like we need to take that off. Full Roush on the rear and also the rear diffuser. So she has the Roush square tips, which are kind of rare. You don't see them too much. Tinted, of course, and also has the front lip. Also Roush thing is basically a Roush car minus those fog lights and the supercharger. So I guess you could say it's almost a stage two and obviously the GT500 wing. The GT500 wing is the best wing ever made for a Mustang. That's why I even have one on my car with carbon fiber. Something that recently happened that kind of sucks, but I know it's obviously bound to happen with cars, but I actually got a little a little scratch right there from a rock chip. I don't know if you guys could see that. It's a little line. That totally sucks because that means it hit my headlight. Luckily, it did not like hit the headlight enough to crack it or anything, but that just sucks when you get a little scratch. The good thing, I have a little Dr. Color Chip touch-up paint. I'll polish and buff it out, and it won't be that big of a deal. And I could, I could get 99% of it out, but it just still sucks, you know? Like, I know for a fact I heard that on the freeway because I remember driving behind a car that just kicked up a crap ton of rocks and I was like, no, why did I get stuck in this car behind the car that kicks up a bunch of rocks? It's just part of driving though, so put miles on your car and enjoy it. You can always get it resprayed. So something I find interesting is a lot of people always talk about cold air intakes, right? And apparently the stock cold air intake box, with like is it fully enclosed, is not that bad because some of these cold air intakes are actually hot because they're open to the engine bay. And mine's open to the engine bay. I have an air raid. If you look, the exterior temp is 70. Oh, come on, get in gear. The exterior temp is 70, uh, 69, 70. And the inlet air on my dash is 68. So that is recording, shift. That's recording the temperature from the little sensor that's on the intake, like manifold or intake two. So we're a degree or two below. However, if I start to sit, that'll start to just skyrocket. And that's because the air is just sitting and getting hotter and hotter stuck under the hood. And that usually happens when I'm in traffic. Like it'll get to one, if it's a 70 degree day, maybe 120, 130. So I just kind of wanted to share what the temperatures are that I'm seeing. And it's usually a degree or two, like when I'm cruising on the freeway, a degree or two under whatever ambient is, like the exterior air temperature. And that's as good as it gets. However, when it starts to sit, that's why people pop their hoods at the drag races and stuff or try to cool it off because it lets out all that air or else it's just trapped underneath your hood and actually becoming a hot air intake. Ooh, there's a CLK 55 AMG. Those are kind of cool, kind of rare. Oh yeah, benefit of air. Go over speed bumps, then air out, make a bunch of noise. You can run your airlines either inside or outside. I chose to run them outside just because I love that sound, that, tss, that hissing sound. I mean, if you're gonna get airlift, don't you want people to know you have airlift? If it's just dead silent, who knows that you went up or down in the height, you know? I notice I stick my tongue out a lot whenever I shift and stuff. I think that's just me focusing. Downshift, baby. Sound 
of that 5.0, baby. Woo! Doesn't get better. High revving V8 with plenty of torque. I got this diesel guy that keeps breaking his neck. He's got a giant Denali, like a really nice red Denali, which I don't know if you guys could see. He literally just keeps looking back and forth through the two windows because the B pillar is like right in his face. Just hilarious. Oh, and he just rolled down his window. I think he likes it. I think he likes it. But then there's those people when you're driving, they're just pissed. Like they're super mad whenever you downshift next to them. Which is rightful. I mean, I do make a lot of noise. Oh, gave him the nod. Dude, he is breaking his neck. He must really like it. Dude, diesel guy. I'll, I want that truck, man. It wasn't like jack sky high. It was actually really nice. Dude, I want his truck. That thing's super clean. It just goes to show there's people that just appreciate nice vehicles. I mean, I appreciate really nice builds. There's clean cars all over the place. Not maybe my style, but I can respect what their vision was and how clean it was. Plus the quality of parts, you know? Having clean, good quality parts on a car just shows that they actually cared. Slapping a bunch of eBay stuff which is hilarious because we're going to talk about that in a second, but slapping a bunch of like eBay stickers and stick on stuff isn't the best, but sometimes you can find some gems on eBay. I found possibly one of the best gems on eBay for Mustangs ever. I'm not even lying. Waiting on a red light. Waiting on a red light. Ready, finally, let's get on the freeway. Hopefully there's not a whole bunch of traffic. I'm tired of waiting with these stoplights. to the house i figured just come back here because i gotta work here anyways i gotta edit some videos for clients because quick turnarounds equals happy clients equals more clients equals yeah just all around good things i found something that is it could possibly be the next big thing for mustangs for 11 well 10 through 12s really because this is specifically for the 10 through 12 cars that have halogens so if you have that car which is generally a cheaper option car because back then hids were an option not a lot of cars came with them mainly the California Specials and GT500s. The halogen is the one with the big chrome bowl, so that way it just pushes out all the light, usually a yellowy headlight in there. And uh, it, it does look pretty aggressive, but I found something that you guys are gonna love. I found 1314 headlights that look exactly like the 1314s that I have on my car, but for the 10 through 12 halogen bowl cars and their plug and play. This is all under $300. Just so you guys know, for an average set of 1314 headlights with the wiring kits and all that, you're probably looking at like $1,200 to $1,300. So this is a fraction of the price. I've mentioned it before, but it comes with these two DRL bars on the 1314s, this little projector orb, and then this chrome ring, and then there's a reflector back behind there for the, uh, the turn signal bulb. These, judging by the photos, look identical. I haven't found anybody with a review yet, and I don't have to use them because I have a 1314 car. So if you guys wanna take the risk for $300, I think this might be a huge, huge come up, huge find for all those 10 through 12 halogen cars. Now, I don't know if it comes with a bulb or not, but it looks like it's made for just halogens, but through a projector. So it's still gonna be yellow. But here's a trick. If you go to Dio Dynamics and you get the LED equivalent of that halogen bulb, so I think, I think it's like an H7 or something. If you get an LED H7, 
you're gonna have very good light output if those projectors are quality. It already comes with the two DRL bars, which are those two white lines really right there that look super sick when you're driving and just don't have your headlights on. But also, you just gotta get an LED turn signal bulb, maybe a switchback, and boom, you're like all in, probably 400 bucks for a full headlight swap that's plug and play. You get LED headlights, you get a better turn signal bulb, and you get those crazy cool looking designs headlights with the two bars. That might just be the deal of the decade because I haven't seen a mod like that in a long time. Now, I don't have any experience with it, so I can't vouch for it, but I'm gonna leave the link down in the description below. I want some of you guys to go ahead and buy them. You guys be the judge and let me know, and I'll probably like update or like pin a comment and have one of your guys' reviews on them. It'd be cool if one of you guys even made a YouTube video on it and I could link that down below. I think that's pretty much it for today's video. I'm gonna keep it nice and short. And I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, if you did, then please comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.